we are going to take a look at identities and equations with no solutions. The question is, is this equation an, ident an identity? Okay, well, an identity means that the equation is always true for any variable that you could substitute in. So you wind up with an equation that's an identity when you have something like x is equal to x. Okay, now let's think about this. When the variables are the same, that means whatever I substitute in for x on the left, I would have to substitute the same in, thing in for x on the right. So that would give me something like 2 equals 2 if I substituted 2, or 10 equals 10 if I substituted 10. So if you wind up with everything canceling out or lining up in a way where you have something equal to itself, that is what we call an identity because it's always going to be true. Okay, so let's take a look at our equation and see if we have an identity. I'm gonna start by solving it. On the left, I've got 9w, and on the right side, I've got negative 8w plus 17w. So since these have the same variable, these are like terms, so I'm just gonna combine my like terms negative 8 plus 17. And that gives me 9, so I have 9w. So notice our equation is 9w is equal to 9w. So I can stop there because I see that they're identical. They're the same, so it's an identity. Now, if you wanted to keep going, it would still be the same answer because if I said, let me solve for w, I would divide by 9 on both sides. And they're going to give me the same answer. 9w divided by 9 is w. And same thing over here. So that gives me w equals w, or 9w equals 9w, wherever you stop. As soon as you're able to see it's the same thing on both sides, you know that, yes, it's going to be an identity. Is the equation an identity? OK, well, let's start solving and just see what happens. So when I have an equation like this, 4h equals 2h plus 5h minus 8, I'm going to start by combining the like terms I see on the same side. Notice I can put the 2h and the 5h together because they both have h. The negative 8 can't be combined with that because it does not. Okay, so when I combine my like terms, I'm going to say 4h is equal to, well, 2h plus 5h gives me 7h, and then I still have to subtract 8. Okay, I want to get all my variables on the same side. Since all my numbers are already on the right, I'm going to try to get all my variables or h terms to the left. Now this minus is grouped with the 8. It's a positive 7h. So my opposite, if I want to move it to the other side, is to subtract 7h. And when I subtract 7h from both sides, notice I'm lining up my like terms. Here it cancels out. 4h minus 7h gives me negative 3h, and over here I'm left with negative 8. So you can see already that this is not going to be an identity. And if I wanted to keep solving, I could. I could divide by negative 3 on both sides, and that would tell me that h is equal to 8 over 3. But even once I got to this step, and I can see that I have 3h equal to some number, or negative 3h equal to some number, it's not an identity because I don't have the same thing on both sides of my equal sign. Okay, this equation is 3f equals negative 8f plus 11f, and I want to see if it is an identity. Okay, well let's start solving. The first thing I would do is combine my like terms on the right side, negative 8f plus 11f. and that's gonna give me 3f. So you can see I have the same thing on both sides, 3f is equal to 3f, so yes, that is an identity. Okay, we wanna decide, is this equation an identity? We have negative 2n equals 4n minus 5n plus three. So let's just start solving. I'm going to start by combining my like terms on the right side. My like terms are the 4n minus 5n. 
If I say 4n minus 5n, I get negative 1n, and then I still have to add 3. Now from here, if I was going to keep solving, I would say, okay, let me add 1n to both sides to get all my n terms together. But you can see already, this is not going to be an identity. I've got negative 1n is equal to 3, and of course I can divide that by negative 1 to get n equals negative 3. So if I get a, a single number that n is equal to, it's not an identity. If I had gotten something like n is equal to n, then it would have been. How many solutions does this equation have? Okay, so let's think about this. When we have an equation, there's three possible numbers of solutions. It can have one solution, so that would be if I work it out and get a single number answer. So let's say I solve an equation and I get something like x equals 3. Well, that means 3 is the only solution. 3 is the only answer that works. So if I get something like that, where I get a number answer, then my equation would have one solution. If I have an identity, something where I wind up with something like x is equal to x, or 7 is equal to 7, something that is always true, well, that means it has infinitely many solutions, meaning any number. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Not any number, but it has an infinite number of solutions. For example, if we had lines, it would have to be a point on the line. But again, infinite number of solutions. Let's just go that far for today. And it's also possible to wind up with no solution. No solution happens when we wind up with something that is always false. So for example, if we had all our variables cancel out and we're left with something like 4 is equal to 7, and you're like, well, no, 4 is not equal to 7, then that would be a false statement, right? So our true statements have infinitely many solutions, our always true statements. And our always false statements have no solution. And our symbol for no solution looks like this. Sometimes you might see that. All right, so with that in mind, let's solve and see how many solutions we have to this equation. So taking a quick glance, I've got negative 3y plus 6y minus 4 equals negative 8y. I'm going to start by combining like terms on the left side. Negative 3y plus 6y gives me positive 3y. So I've got 3y minus 4 is equal to negative 8y. Okay, I want to solve for y, so I want all my y terms together. I already have all my number terms on the left, so let's move all of our y terms to the right. Since this is a positive 3y, I would have to subtract 3y on both sides. So that leaves me with negative 4 on the left, and on the right, I have to subtract. Negative 8 minus 3, negative 8y minus 3y gives me negative 11y. Now, I could keep going if I want to get all the way down to my number answer, but I only need to know how many solutions. So I can already see, even if I didn't do this last step to solve all the way down, that I'm going to wind up with only one number answer that y is equal to. In this case, y is equal to 4 over 11. So that means it has only one solution. That number that we got is our answer. OK, so we already saw the three possibilities. One solution happens when we get a single number answer that is equal to x, or whatever our variable is infinitely many solutions when we wind up with a statement that is always true, and we can have no solution when we wind up with a statement that is always false. So let's solve our equation and see what happens. When I combine my like terms, 6x plus 10x gives me 16x. And then from here, I want to solve for x. 
Since all my numbers are on the left, let's get all my x terms to the right. And I don't even need to keep going. I've got negative 1 is equal to 3x minus 16x. So that's going to give me negative 13x. But you can already see, even without solving this problem, that if I were to keep going, I'm going to wind up with a single number answer for x. Now, in this case, if you want to see that, I'd say, okay, a negative divided by a negative is positive. So I wind up with 1 over 13 is equal to x. That means that is the only number equal to x. So that means it simply has one solution. How many solutions does the equation have? Okay, well let's solve and see. Combining our like terms, 7m plus 2m gives me 9m. I still have minus 6 on the left side. And on the other side, I have 9m. Now be careful. A lot of times people see the 9m's on both sides and think it's infinitely many, but it's not. They don't match. If we had 9m minus 6 is equal to 9m minus 6, then they would be the same. But we have the minus 6 on one side and not the other. So this is going to be a false statement. And to make it a little clearer, one of the things you can do is if you keep solving, if you tried to get all of your m terms on one side, well, this is a positive 9m, so I'd have to subtract. And you would see what happens is my m terms would cancel on both sides. So on the left, I have negative 6. On the right, everything canceled out, which means I really just have 0, right? Because 9m is the same as 9m plus 0. And you, this makes it a little easier to see that this is a false statement. Negative 6 is not equal to 0. That's always false. So this one would have no solution. How many solutions does the equation have? Negative 10d plus 5d minus 2 equals 5d. Combine your like terms. Negative 10d plus 5d gives me 5d. I still have my minus 2. And on the other side, I also have 5d. So this is going to be very similar to the last problem. You can already see it's not identical on both sides. One side is 5d minus 2. The other is just 5d. So if I were to try to get all my variables together and subtract 5d on both sides, I'm left with negative 2 on the left. On the right, I have nothing, which is basically my 0, because remember, 5d plus 0 would be the same thing. So it's another false statement, which means that it has no solution. And again, our symbol for that would look like this. That means no solution.